Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.6 to the public. iOS 17.6 is available around the world at the same time for everyone, as long as you're on an iOS 17 supported device. That means iPhone 10s, 10R, all the way up to the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. Now, this particular update can be installed by going to your settings, then going to general, then software update. Now, if you're on iOS 18 developer betas or public betas, you won't have this update as you're on a newer version. If you wanted to downgrade to iOS 17 versions, you'd actually need to use a Mac or Windows computer. I have a separate video on how to do that in the description. Now, this particular update varies in size depending on which device you're coming from, installing it on, and what version you're using as well. It could vary anywhere from one gigabyte to over six gigabytes if it needs to fully reinstall the operating system. Now, as far as what's new in this update, well, there's a few changes. Apple says bug fixes and security updates, but there's more things to talk about. The first thing has to do with Siri. So if we go back and we go down to privacy and security, then we go to location services, then we scroll down to Siri, there's an update here. So under Siri, if we take a look at the previous version of 17.5.1, not only have they changed the titles at the top where it used to say Siri and dictation, now it just says Siri, but they've also changed it to allow for a different option to ask next time or when I share as far as allow location access. So it's a small update, but something they've updated. They've also updated Find My with 17.6 specifically on the iPad. So if you're using an iPad and you have Apple Pencil Pro on the latest iPad Pro versions or iPad Air, there's actually an update here. So one of those has to do with Find My, so we'll go in. And within Find My for Apple Pencil Pro, not only do we have directions, but we now have Mark is Lost. We can activate that and then, of course, remove the device. What this means is if you mark it as lost, no one else can add it to their Apple ID if they find it, and then it will give them additional information if they need to return it to you, saying who's, who actually owns it, and then they can get this back to you. So just like if you lost anything else. Another thing they've added has to do with Beats. Now these are AirPods Pro, but if you have Beats and maybe you open up your device nearby, Beats Pill support has been added. So you have these nice animations and additional sort of features so you can add them. And then also there's an update with Beats that allows you to change the duration of press and hold on Beats. Under accessibility, you should now have the press and hold duration option for Beats as well. So let me know if you have the latest Beats headphones and if you see this. Within the TV app, they've updated the main page for MLS season pass to actually have League Cup information with the standings. And then also if you go into an individual team and you're subscribed to this, they'll have more information like that as well with some interface changes. It's very minor, but it's only on 17.6. If we go into photos within photos under recently deleted, if we go ahead and maybe go into one here and then go to delete, it will now give you a message that this will permanently delete the selected photo that it can't be undone. They've changed some of this wording to let you know that it's not coming back and there's no way to recover it. Within the news app, if we go to sports and maybe you're following a different sports team and a new event is coming on, there's actually a new update to show a live activity for that when it starts. And it will even tell you when the event starts, you'll get real time updates on your home screen and lock screen using the dynamic island or a live activity. Also, if you're using contactless payments, you'll be notified about changing the default app for the contactless payment card. If you have that option in your country, this may only apply to the EU, but it looks like it's something they've added, at least within the code. There's also a lot of new messages that have been changed. One of them has to do with iMessage, where it can tell you if the message is from an unknown international sender. Additionally, to go along with messages, if you're using Apple Wallet and if you filed for bankruptcy, the app can tell you if the card is locked due to filing for bankruptcy. They've also changed the message that has to do with getting moisture or water in your charge port. It will now say you need to disconnect your charge cable and let it dry for a couple of hours. So it did notify you before, but now it's actually giving you more instructions as to what you need to do to remedy the issue. Additionally, there's splash screens. If you go into podcasts, I had a new one come up. It's just talking about the latest features features with transcripts and search in transcripts. And there's additional wording changes such as things with legacy contacts. So if you are setting up a legacy contact, it clarifies some of that information. Also, if you're using family sharing, there will be a new button to accept or decline being shared within a family. So that's if you're sharing to someone else, they can accept or decline that they've just updated the interface just a little bit there as well. So lots of other little small things here, but not any huge changes as most of those are with iOS 18.
Many people have actually said that the storage is fixed in this update where it's freeing up a lot of storage for them. That's not just general storage with maybe the system data as this is sort of a cache data which goes up and down, but in general they're gaining some storage back. At least a few people that have installed this have said that to me regularly with every single beta that came out and with the final version as well. Apple has also fixed quite a few things in this update. Now they haven't said specifically, but it looks like they've fixed any speed or stuttering issues that were in previous betas. Notifications not coming in should be resolved and also Bluetooth headphone connectivity issues should be resolved or improved. So many people have seen that they haven't said it specifically. And it also looks like they may have fixed the alarm bug. This is something they acknowledge, but haven't since said that they've fixed, but it looks like it's fixed. If you're using a sleep wake up alarm or just a regular alarm, it seems like they're working properly. Now I haven't heard any complaints since later betas of iOS 17.6. Now, if we have standby mode enabled, it looks like they've fixed issues with editing the actual clocks. So before, when you were in one of these clocks, if you press and hold, and then you wanted to edit the color, it wouldn't let that work properly before. After you edit a single time, you go out, go like this, hit done, then you wouldn't be able to edit again press and hold. It works every time. It gives a little bit of haptic feedback as well. So it looks like they've fixed this issue where many people were having this. It seems like it's resolved. It definitely wasn't working on my devices before. Now it is again. Additionally, Apple has acknowledged issues with screen time, and it looks like it should be resolved in this update. Many people have said that it seems to be functioning better with 17.6, but we don't have a specific statement yet directly from Apple. So it looks like this fixes a lot of issues we had in the past, just like iOS 18 does. And the continue work on this. As far as other bugs, while the wallpaper dimming bug is still here, it's even in iOS 18. So maybe they're just not going to mess around with this and leave it alone, but either way, it still seems to be here. As far as security updates, well, Apple updates this after they release it. So now that it's released, typically it can update right away or within hours, sometimes even days. So I'll link this in the description. So if you want to see the latest security updates, they'll be here. And this should be, give you a good idea as far as what's in this update. And if you're wondering if you should install it, well, I would recommend installing iOS 17.6 RC just for security updates. Typically Apple patches major issues and it's a good idea. And many people say that the performance overall is quite good, whether that's on older devices with promotion on newer devices or just opening different apps or anything else. Things seem to be very fast, fluid, and what they should have been with iOS 17 all along. It seems like it's a very solid update. As far as the heat of the device and warmer environments, it seems to be staying nice and cool. We've talked about this on the weekend follow-up videos and it stays much cooler than iOS 18 at this point, even iOS 17.5.1. There's been great reports of that. As far as battery life, well, overall battery life seems to be pretty good as well. And I've been using iOS 18 full time, but thanks to Cameron for sending in his battery life on iOS 17.6. This is on an iPhone 15 pro max with hundred percent battery health. You'll see he had seven hours and two minutes of screen active time, two hours and 51 minutes of screen idle time and used just over 50% of his battery. He said he easily gets through the day using this full time and many people are reporting the same thing. So it seems to be a very stable and reliable version of iOS and much better than the previous ones we've had, at least so far. And of course, we'll talk more about that on the weekend follow-up with sort of a final follow-up of iOS 17.6. As far as future updates, well, iOS 17.7 beta one could be sometime this week, along with many other betas we're expecting with iOS 18, Apple intelligence, and much more. So we'll see different iOS 17 betas typically up until the release of iOS 18, which is expected in mid September around the iPhone 16 launch. That's typically what Apple does every year. As far as benchmarks, well, they seem to be doing pretty good. If we go into Geekbench, it scored 2,927 for single core, 7,337 for multi-core. In general, the past couple times here, if we go to the history, the past couple times here have been pretty great, as high as 7,508. In general, it seems to be some of the best scores I've ever gotten with iOS 17. So definitely an improvement. And again, I recommend installing it. If you found anything else new in iOS 17.6, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.